Hello, Andrew. Good morning. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Victoria. My name is Jane Johnston. I'm with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camos, and, and I'm here with... Hi, and I'm Andrew. Oh, thanks for switching us around. Uh, I'm Andrew Plank with Royal LePage, and we're both realtors here in Victoria doing our thing. <laughs> Sorry, Jane. I like to play. Love you like Merry your brother, Christmas. brother. Happy best of the seasons and all that stuff. Looks like you're so I did at... something interesting. I did something interesting today. I included the stats for the last three weeks, so people can really see the trend over the month. So I might do that mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the stats today and thinking about the fact that you know when you look at yeah, we'll talk about that, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I like the fire in the background, Jane. Thank you. And is that is that like dead Santa beside the tree or something? What is that red and white thing in the background? <laughs> That thing? Yeah. That's a Santa bag and it's filled with stockings. And then I have okay. another one filled with uh, hats. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. It so, looks pretty um, like there's an underland out there too. I can see snow flying in the background. Yeah. It's so beautiful, the Arbutus tree. So how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Gonna, I might have to... Yeah fly to Vancouver in this crazy stuff today, but that's, uh, that's another story. We'll see if it actually ends up happening. Um, but yeah, been, been busy out showing properties and helped some folks into a condo last week and got a house probably coming up in January. That's going to be a good starter for somebody. Um, and keep it moving. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, we have unintended consequences from the um, buyer recession period. I'm very busy showing buyers around right now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The buyer recession period, you mean the upcoming recession period starting January 1st? And how right. is that? People want to, people want to get in before, before the recession period? They want to get in before they have to do a deposit. Uh, okay. All right. I mean, they don't have to. No, but they don't have to. Some, but so, so that, that's that's to the point of what we're going to be talking about next too. Um, because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about how these things work, and people, or some people are taking action on things from a bit of a misunderstanding. So what you're saying is, is that people. Like this recession recession period coming up for resale properties is going to require people if they don't buy, if they make an unconditional offer, or if they if they don't remove conditions in the first three days, or sorry, if they decide to walk away within the first three days, and the reason is not because of one of the conditions in their offer, if there are conditions, they are required to pay a bit of a penalty. Point that only five. happens. Yeah, that only happens if they decide not to go forward for one of those reasons. And that's yeah. a really small chance. Well, in a condo, it can happen easily. Anyway. Well, most people are making conditional offers. Yes, I know that. It, it. I don't think it matters if you have conditions or don't have conditions. It's just the fact that if you, after it, within the three days, mm -hmm. then you pay that. Anyway, let's this, talk this about is, it. This is your... misconceptions, yeah. This is all part of the misconceptions that are that are out there. Anyway, they just feel like there's a bit of a risk now. They can't make an offer willy nilly. There's they have to put skin in the game, and there's potential consequences depending on when they rescind their offer. If they rescind their offer, how many offers have my clients ever rescinded? Maybe like two. Yeah, even on new construction, um, which has always had as long as we've been in the business. The right for rescission it's very uncommon to rescind and even then there's no and there's no skin in the game then that's a hundred percent ability to rescind with no requirement for uh, a penalty so but um but anyway, think, that's, that's not what we're here for today but i feel like i feel like this, i mean i already feel like you and i have like some difference of opinion as to how this goes so it's a, probably a good conversation to have at least for sure you know if you're considering buying something and concerned about this rescission period get all the facts, really understand it because it is, um, it's a bit of a new, uh, 
a new train. And so we're all sort of trying to figure it out. And it hasn't been too clear with the rules that have been put out so far. Yeah, but the seller can rescind um, and it does not trigger the re rescission clause because if the seller hasn't sold, if it's subject to the seller not selling their um, house, if they're buying a place and the seller triggers the rescission clause, apparently you don't have to pay any penalty. How does the seller rescind? If they have not sold their, if they don't remove their, if the seller has a condition, let's say subject to the seller lawyer Fine. approval. Okay. And the lawyer says no, or subject to the seller selling their house or buying another house. Well, the rescission okay. fee only account only only applies really if you're if you're rescinding for a reason outside of the conditions. I just as before, if you had conditions and you decide to rescind, decide to not go forward because of conditions, you're not paying the penalty, even within the first three days. Yeah, the seller, if the seller rescinds, it doesn't trigger the clause. Right. But it's very it's a very small window too on how a seller could rescind. Because a seller, unless they have their own conditions put in, which is again pretty uncommon. And, and it's well, not we a, all know a realtor who puts those in. Right. But it's not, and then it's not a rescission either. It's not fulfilling conditions. Okay, semantics. Let's move on. This, like I said, there's confusion in these things. Okay. So top five, top five reasons why the government's 55 rule is a bad decision. We're going to be talking about that today. The purpose of this discussion is to, to realize what the unintended consequences are. But first, let's just do our stats. Our so stats, month to date, yeah. go ahead, mister. Okay, so month to date, so we're using the left column now, it looks like. Um, this does move around, doesn't it? Because sometimes the more current no. is on the right. No? Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, I think so. <laughs> so, so good. It would, we keep it. We keep it. There's always change here, and just to keep you folks on your toes. So on the left column, um, the left left section, um, so far December 2022, 223 net unconditional sales. Compare that with 438 from the year before for the full month of December. So I'd say we're a little under target because we're not going to see a lot more unconditional sales by the end of this month. Uh, new listings, 292 in the last uh, 19 days whereas there were 399 the full month in December 2021. And active listings were up to 1,869 of, uh, as of um, the 19th, and that was a full 652 active listings, wow, um, in uh, December 2021. Which was unusual. Which was unusual. Do we want to talk about the week before? You have the other? No, I'm, no, no, I'm going to talk about it on this one. Okay. So often, um, Andrew's mentioned this in the past, the, the length of the bar doesn't mean that's the number. So the first one on December 5th, uh, we had 100, 100, 148 sales in the seven day period, 39 uh, in the week of December 12th, and then 22 this past week. So we're really seeing a slowing of the market in terms of new listings. Pending mm -hmm. was 100 down to 22 last week and then 21 this week. So pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Price decreases from 85 at the beginning of December down to 18 and then just eight in the past week. So people are settling down. And then expired listings went from 98 to 14. And then this past week they're at 44. So people making the decision, this is why the number of listings is down. Um, even though the, uh, pending is also down is because people are taking their houses off the market. Yeah. So for example, I tried to show a property um, uh, this weekend and uh, made the showing request and it was, it was canceled by the seller. And so then I checked in with the agent and they said, yeah, the sellers are, you know, family in town and um, here for the holidays and they, they just didn't want to have showings available at that time. And we're finding more and more people over the holidays with their plans and so forth. They just don't want to have to keep home clean because they want to be able to uh, to get messy and uh, and enjoy their homes and uh, hunker down with their fires on and so forth. So um, less chance that we're going to see a lot of activity. There's not a lot of activity generally happening over this period of time. People just choose to choose to settle back and, and not do business. 
Yeah. I also want to say, if you want to get in touch with your agent right now, don't email them, text them because uh, people don't read their emails in their cars, but now with Apple play and all that um, text messages do come back over, do come over uh, the car. And so I think if you want to reach somebody in a timely way right now, just text them. I think it's, I mean, it's for me, it's always been that way. If you want to reach someone in a timely way, text or call text is best because we're often in a meeting or driving or something. Um, uh, if it's urgent, we will call you back. Um, if it's a non-urgent item, just email us, of course, but it's less likely we're going to get to it, um, you know, in a really quick fashion. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So five, oh, uh, this obviously did not, uh, it's fine. Don't, don't draw attention well. to it. So don't I went to, to I went to the, uh, uh, Canada Revenue, whatever, CRA or whatever it is, StatsCan. I went to StatsCan to look at the demographics for Greater Victoria, and I created this handy-dandy graph, and I was looking at what percentage of the population is below 55 and what is above. And uh, this is uh, interesting to me. By the way, there's 14 people over the age of 100 in Victoria, which is nice. Oh, that's um, cool. I, yeah. So if you could just see the split here, I mean, you're going to have people probably from age 30 up wanting to purchase homes, and then you have your 55 plus. And uh, so we're going to just talk about where people are looking for homes and what type of home they're looking for and why this 55 plus rule has had negative, unintended negative consequences, right? And we're still waiting to see what some of these are, but there's definitely... There's definitely concerns around rule changes in general by government. And then it's not necessarily, yeah, it's just a matter of once you change the rules or change the playing field and people start to adapt to it and they always find a way around it. So let's talk, we'll talk about that today and talk about what could possibly, what could possibly go wrong. So typically 55 plus uh, condos have had, uh, a better resale value, like a lower resale value than other condos, because what happens is if you look at this market, there's less people buying over 55. And so when we're pricing those condos, we're looking to um, to reach people with a limited income. Usually they're on the verge of retirement, probably in the next decade or so. So up to the 65 mark. They're probably working and then likely they're not working. And so this is, this is, I just want to sort of set the playing stage here for why this has unintended consequences. Okay. So number five, there have been age restricted condos, right? Under 55. So 45, 30. Right. Um, let's, let's just really quickly recap what the rule, what the rule change is. Um, so the real change is really that uh, in the past, you were allowed to have an age restriction in a strata. Um, and that age restriction could be anything. You could restrict two-year-olds. You could restrict anyone under 16. You could restrict anybody over 75. Um, there was one number, the 55, that was more, um, I guess, common and recognized. And even um, it didn't trigger uh, certain issues with um, with lenders where they were causing problems for um, the certain lenders wouldn't lend if it was like discriminatory practice. So for example, when um, lending to a, a building that restricts people under 19 years old, that's considered a discriminatory practice, but the 55 plus for whatever reason is, is just considered a, I guess, retirement type of, of age level level. Um, and was the one num number that wasn't considered. But they've now removed the the uh, removed the ability to put in an age restriction in your bylaws. And any current age restrictions are now waived other than the 55 plus. So that's so the back number there. Basically, if they didn't want babies, they made it 19 plus. If they wanted adults, they were usually looking at 30, 35, yeah. 45. And it was kind of an arbitrary number. I don't even know how they came to these numbers or or what the decisions were. It was based on what the strategy of the of the people on the council was. 
Stratas are just little tiny governments, right? And it's just a mix of the owners making a decision based on what they think they, they want best for, for their use and enjoyment of their units. So it's majority rules generally. It takes, it takes three quarter vote to change these bylaws. So these so, develop over time. So the rule changed and a number of people wrote offers, including one of my clients. And we wrote on a what was formerly a 45 plus um, strata. And, um, there were, I noticed in the strata docs when I was reading it, that they were allowing kids in the pool and, um, they were like kid friendly, but it was definitely adult oriented. It was in uh, broad mead. So and it kids, was, kids allowed as visitors kind of thing, but not to own, not to live there. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they, I mean, they addressed the fact that kids were in, so I was like, yeah, this is nice because the, um, potential buyers had grandkids had children and grandkids and they live in the area and the whole reason for them moving to victoria was to spend time with their grandkids right however after they bought the strata had a vote to move from 45 to 55 age restriction and the realtor called me in a panic and she said jane uh i'm just wondering what is the age of your buyers? Because we just voted for 55 plus. Mm -hmm. And I said, what if I told you they were 47? Mm -hmm. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I said, don't worry. They, <laughs> they were over 55? They were 68 and 74. Yeah. Well, that's lucky, but that's also, I mean, the fact is, is that there is this, and was that after this, um, this had been put in place and they chose to do this? So this is what's happening, um, what Jane's alluding to and what this number five is, is that because they've wiped the state slate clean and if you had a 16 plus, for example, age restriction, and now you don't, um, those owners are gonna be, gonna be concerned about maybe um, if they truly don't wanna have young families and so on in, their only option is to go to the 55 plus age restriction because that's the only remaining option available to them. And so even some, we're hearing from lawyers who, who specialize in strata that they are receiving a lot of um, requests from stratas and a lot of votes from stratas to go to the 55 plus age restriction. And that does cause, I mean, if you're already 55, if you're not 55 and you own in there and live in there and the restriction comes into place, uh, you're grandfathered. If you, um, but if, if you go to buy in there and it's not yet age restricted, and you agree to buy it and you're unconditional in your purchase, but then in that meantime, between your agreement to purchase it and the time that you give the money, if that strata goes and makes a vote, you may have agreed to buy it, you're allowed to own it, but you're not allowed to move into it. That's a problem. It is a problem. And the government and didn't really leave a wiggle room for that or anticipate this for people who are gonna be, there's, it's a small amount, but there are gonna be, be people who are gonna be really messed by this. Right. And so they'll have to go to a lawyer. It'll cause a problem. Okay, next one. So what they've done is, uh, and this is another client of mine who is in uh, their early 50s, and now all of a sudden they are unable to purchase a condo that they were interested in. What, because that condo again moved to 55 plus? I mean, this is a small subset of all the condos out there. There are going to be a number that were age restricted that aren't going to change, but it is a challenge to be aware of. Yeah. Um, so, so anybody now, like was like I've had a client in the past where we were buying into a forty-five plus age restricted condo, mm -hmm. and she was 42, 43, and then they had a vote. They have to have a vote to allow her to to have allowed her in, and they did, and so they changed the rule to forty-two because she was 42. So and, and, is, and that's a, that's a hard, that's a hard one to actually get to get everybody together on. Cause as you imagine, um, trying to get a, a, every, let's say there's 30 owners in the strata complex and you're just a potential buyer. It's hard to get everybody together to do a three quarter vote, to change bylaws, to go to this lawyer, to, to register it with the land title office. This is, you're not usually going to get that kind of movement. Um, and a lot of people have this misconception that, if the strata council gives them a, you know, a permission that the strata council has the authority to, to make these rules, but they don't, it's, it, it's the bylaw that you have to go by. And if the strata council, their job is to enforce the bylaws, 
not to interpret or change them. And so people do get in trouble with that. And even realtors uh, don't always understand this, but it's, uh, yeah. the, the staff council really doesn't have any power to authorize this. So, okay, okay. so it limits a large portion of potential buyers. It does limit some buyers from, um, you know, it, it's changed the goalposts by removing all these age restrictions. It's actually gonna make it so that, yeah, people are. It removes everybody to the left side of that line. If they, yeah, if, if you choose to change your, your bylaws to 55 plus, you lose out on, you know, this whole supply demand. You take off the whole left side from your supply uh, options. And so you do lose potential for, um, for money. Okay. Number three, it may, I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but I expect it will. It may change the strategy around planning for contingencies and strategy management. So typically people who are working um, are forecasting into the future that they're going to be living there a long time. And so they're historically uh, putting more money into the contingency fund so that when problems arise in the future and they're still living there, that it, they will be dealt with. So I'm thinking things like uh, the roof, the building envelope, um, balconies, windows, all of that stuff. And so when somebody's on a fixed income, when you have people who are of uh, retirement, they're often very concerned about managing their money. They may live for a long time. They may live for 30 years after they retire. And so they then become conservative in potentially conservative in their planning um, for contingencies. And so they may, they do have to put money into a contingency reserve fund, but they may deal, deal with um, building upgrades by special assessments because so if, if they're not going to be living there in 20 years, they may say, I just, I'm going to, that'll happen in 20 years so they can deal with it then. The, the profile of a buyer uh, or an owner is much different if it's 55 plus versus if, if the age limit, if the ages living in that building are over 55 versus younger. And yes, the whole orientation around how you upkeep and maintain your assets and your thought process around it differs depending on your age. So I think my cat is sitting on my keyboard. So it took me out of it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm in the spotlight. Can you uh, back in? Okay. There we go. Thank you. Oh, Can you hear me? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, my cat sat on the keyboard. One of the dangers of this. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, oftentimes we do see a lot of 55 plus buildings are not supremely well maintained. They're not, unless it's a really high income uh, area, like up on Arbutus um, Road there, there's the townhouse complex. I see their, um, their yard crews are in there working all the time to maintain the grounds to immaculate conditions. Um, yeah. All the common property is really well maintained. But then you see a lot of buildings, let's say, for example, in Fairfield that were built in the 70s or 80s, and they're just um, not choosing to do new windows, not choosing to do new balconies. They're, they're, they're running on a, I went, well, the one I ran into you yesterday at, I don't know if you went through their bike, um, their bike storage area, but it's an old converted um, uh, a hot tub area. They've put a planking down over where the hot tub would have been, and they're just storing their bikes in there because they've chosen not, I mean, it's expensive to repair and maintain that kind of asset. And yeah. So just choosing not to. Okay. <clears throat> if you are uh, married to somebody who is the 55, the 55 plus person in the unit and they pass away, um, you will have to sell your unit. And this happens uh, if you have, let's say, um, you have children and you are 55 plus and you pass away and your child is not of that age group, they will have to sell. It's no longer an asset. So, and if they rent, the renter has to be 55 plus as well. Yeah. The good news is, I guess, you know, along with this 55, this, this rule around removing age restrictions other than 55 plus, even if the strata council chooses to move the needle so that it's all 55 plus, of course, what we're talking about here hasn't changed if the building's always been 55 plus. It's always been a concern that if someone passes uh, that's under 55, if it's a couple, then they have to sell or they have to really quickly recouple. 
find somebody over 55. <laughs> Get a boyfriend. <laughs> Move in with them or girlfriend. Okay. And then for financing for CMHC, we are for 55 plus for any age restricted condos. This was previously any age. Um, you have to have 20% down because CMHC and Genworth won't finance anything that has an age restriction. Yeah. So a lot more money to buy um, people in the, you know, not everybody who's 55 plus, you know, a lot of people are struggling financially and, uh, and getting financing for a purchase is, is problematic. Now, this all applies, we're talking about here is condos. And of course, uh, buying a house is a different price point. And one of the reasons people look to condos is because they're more affordable and um, there's less upkeep in general because the strata is generally taking care of it. And yep. even if it's an older building maybe and, and the, the owner mix is choosing not to do a lot of upkeep, then you know, he'll continue to I guess, run down you know, the complex and not, not keep it built up, but at least your costs will be low until that catastrophic thing happens. There. The other thing that people do, so um, people move from the condo market often to the mobile home market. It's like a balloon. Mm -hmm. If you squeeze it on one end, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so like when condos become too affordable, then they move to mobile homes, which require less money up front, but they have higher monthly strata or pad fees. fees yeah. And they're just, um, they're a depreciating asset. So anyway, I just. I think this is sad. I do. But this is also, you know, but what you're saying is, and this is what people have to do. They have to make decisions around their finances and money and better to be proactive about it. And sometimes the best financial decision is to downsize, sell the condo, move into uh, a mobile home park or, or move to a different city where places are more affordable. We see that all the time with people moving here from Vancouver and Toronto where they're, um, they're concerned about their future. They sell off an asset that's worth more. They come here and get a better lifestyle for less money. And, uh, and, and they're very happy. But then we have people doing the same here. They move from here to Duncan, from here to Comox Valley, other areas of, of Vancouver Island or BC or, or elsewhere. But, uh, but the downsides to a, town, to a, a mobile home um, could be the right decision if, if, if things are looking tight for you. But yeah, these new rule changes we it remains to see, be seen what all the consequences are. I mean, the big one really is the is the um, the rule that allows rentals, um, but th this one is one that's kind of under the radar and a lot of confusion. One thing a lot of people were confused about, and it's been a misconception, and I'm seeing it in letters to the editor, and a lot of people keep trying to clarify this. Um, the, the the rules came out is no more age restrictions other than 55 plus, and no more rental restrictions. But for some reason, people thought that the exception to the 55 plus also meant an exception to the rental restrictions. So you are still allowed to rental restrict a 55 plus building. That is not the case. You cannot rental restrict any building, even if it's 55 plus. But that has been a big misconception that I've been hearing about uh, out there. A lot of people think they still have rental restrictions on their 55 plus buildings. They do not. And that's why some people are moving to 55 plus thinking they have that. And if you're not uh, property managed, if you're a self-managed council and just sort of talking amongst yourself and repeating wrong information, you may make some decisions that, that are not in your best interest or not actually connected to the reality of this new legislation. So I do have the news release with, from this recession period announcement. So it'll at least get people to the right uh, information if they want. Going back to about, okay, so going back, circling back to our initial conversation around the recession period? Or every, no, about all the release, everything that was happening regarding this is a 55 plus, um, looking at the uh, all the rules that came out in November. Okay. The announcement so the, it's called the recession period or 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 really more referring to this the strata rules the strata rules okay okay sorry you said recession period oh sorry. sorry sorry oh uh, yeah okay i'm also you know uh it's funny you because... eggnog last night jane 
No, but I did have a glass of <laughs> shipping. <laughs> but I'm looking, um, I'm actually looking up again the home buyer recession period because <laughs> when I'm looking <laughs> at the government rules, it's not very clear. I'm like, how is he interpreting it differently than I am? But anyway, this is why, because we're crazy. <laughs> are we crazy? We are crazy. It's a good kind of crazy, though, folks. Anyway. Crazy. Just enough to be interesting, hopefully. So, um, any more thoughts about this? Hmm? Any more thoughts about this? Well, I think that given that you and I have a difference of opinion on the recession period, and that's, no, that wasn't our today's topic, but it's coming up January 1st when it applies. Um, we've had a lot of meetings and talks at our, our brokerage about this. I'm sure you have as well. Um, you know, the government isn't going to try to, I mean, they, they're trying to protect the consumer, uh, but at the same time, you know, it creates a lot. Of, there's been a lot of confusion about it. I just, uh, what has always been is you can always include conditions in your offer. And they're not going to penalize people um, and add a, a fee that penalizes you uh, if you put in a condition for financing or a building inspection and then choose to walk away based on that. Um, even within, if it's within the first three days, if you get a building inspection the first day and walk away on the second day because the building inspection didn't pass, that's not considered a rescission. That's considered not, you're just choosing not to remove your conditions. You can wait till if you have two weeks worth of conditions, you can wait and just not remove them. That's not going to trigger any fees payable. It's basically to stop people from writing offers willy nilly. Frivolously writing offers. It, well, right. The, the intent of the recession period is to protect buyers who are making decisions, um, maybe under duress, uh, competing offers. I was competing on four other offers the other day. There's a chance somebody could have written, it doesn't sound like they did, an unconditional offer at that point. And then if they'd gotten cold feet um, two days later, because they realized that they, they probably paid, maybe they paid 50,000 too high. Uh, there's other options out there. They, they were just caught up in the heat of the moment. It gives them the option to walk away within three days. But then the government also included a fee so that people don't just throw offers out there, tie up a property, and then uh, have a get out of jail free card, they still have a little bit of skin in the game by having to pay that fee. Yeah. And so here's the issue is that for sellers, where when you're looking at offers, you are evaluating the buyers who are bringing them in, as well as the monetary number. And so in the past, sometimes people have written offers and then they've come back and renegotiated after, or they've come and, and you lose the other buyers or the buyer has um, re not removed their conditions. And so again, you lose the, the buyers and it causes um, it's, it's onerous on the seller at that point, if they choose the wrong buyer. So that's why um, agents, ask a lot of questions. They're wondering what the, you know, if your finance has been approved and um, whether or not you've, if it's a condo, whether or not you've read the strata docs, all of that information ahead of time, because they want to know if the buyers, what the chances are of the buyer walking away. And what, what this is doing is it's saying to the buyer, you can't just have buyer's remorse and just flip people off. Well, it's, they, they actually have. I mean, that's the whole point of the recession period is you can have buyer's remorse. And that's a new option available to you. But, but okay, you, yes, but, you, but you're going to pay for it. But you will pay for that. Op you will pay for that benefit. Yeah, if you choose to use it. Yeah, but it's still. So maybe the on a $500,000 condo, the buyer will pay $1,250. Like $1,250. Okay. That's not... Uh, equal to the cost of losing all those other buyers in a multiple offer, unfortunately. Right. So this all goes back to, you know, who, I mean, we as realtors represent a seller, we represent a buyer, not usually, we, we don't represent both at the same time, but we are always representing one or the other. And it's in this buyer's best interest to have a recession period. It's not in the seller's best interest because it can harm the seller. We've moved from when when they brought this in or first announced the intention to do this, it was really a seller's market and they were trying to protect buyers. Now we're moving towards the buyer's market and the sellers are, are, this is a double hit on sellers, unfortunately, because 
if they do get a, a couple of interested parties and they accept one of the offers and that offer rescinds, then going back to market, we all know in real estate that if you have to market a property, the longer it is on market, the less like you're likely to get for it. Even if you have really legitimate good offers off the bat, once that first offer falls apart, um, it's harder to get people back to the table. They've moved on. They're wondering why did the first offer fall apart? If they didn't want it, why would I want it? There's, it adds a lot of questions um, and it can harm the seller. So sellers are going to be finding this as a, uh, this adds to the difficult time that sellers are going to experience, I think, this spring. So we'll talk about it in January. We'll get That's clear good. on everything. Hold on. Just let me, um, I'm going to put a link in here. So our next talk is going to be on January 9th, which is a Monday. We're going to always run at 10 a.m. So just remember, uh, please subscribe to us. We are on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, you can also go to our Facebook uh, pages, um, which we will link after this. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or you want us to cover a certain topic, please text us or message us. If you are in an industry, please send us uh, a message that you'd like to be a guest on the show. We'd love to have you. And uh, and if I you're a realtor also um, as in the industry, you know, we welcome the conversation. We welcome your opinions. We welcome the, uh, the discourse. You know, please comment. Um, this is, uh, this, this, the show is, is intended to help consumers, but we get a lot of realtors watching and, um, we, we, we welcome you to come and join us, uh, and, and, and keep the conversation flowing. Free professional development. <laughs> <laughs> How do people reach you, Andrew? Yeah, reach me, uh, reach out at 250-360-6106. Um, info at andrewplank.com is my email website, andrewplank.com. I'm on Instagram at Plank Andrew. That's enough of me being nice. I'm to be naughty <laughs> now that we're finished the show. I was looking else. at that. Okay, and you could reach me. My name is Jane Johnston. My number is 250-744-0775. You can also reach you by email at briarhillgroup at gmail.com. My websites are briarhillgroup.com dot com or vancouver island time dot com where you can see these and other videos on buying and selling as well as neighborhoods and i'm on instagram as realty teacher remax victoria and Vic vancouver island luxury living all right you guys have a great holiday we'll see you uh next year on january 9th at 10 a.m mm -hmm. happy holidays everyone thanks everyone happy holidays see you later bye see you later jane <laughs>